For the best deals on tires and rims, go to tiresourcecanada.ca. And don't forget to use their promo code HOC5 for a 5% discount on all the online orders. The link is in the description below. Hi guys and welcome to another video. If you're already a subscriber, thank you and welcome back. But if you're new, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you know when the next video drops. This video is long overdue by almost two years. Those who follow my channel know that I used to have a 2018 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV GT before the Kia EV6. And I've had the EV6 for almost two years now. I got it in April of 2022. And we are in January of 2024. So in about three months, it would be two years. So 21 months. That car or SUV, crossover vehicle whatever you want to call it uh i had for three and a half years but i never made a video of my ownership before selling it i guess i was just too excited for the ev6 i just never thought about it but almost two years later i'm still getting questions on the video that i made for that vehicle when i first got it it was a detailed review so i think it's time that i make my video on the ownership experience of the mitsubishi outlander phev gt reliability solid i actually had heard bad things about mitsubishi as a brand so i was really taking a leap of faith when getting into it and i was pleasantly surprised i had zero issues with it absolutely none the only time it went to the dealership was for oil changes. It was dealership maintained. I never took it anywhere else. Maintenance, well, apart from oil changes and air filters, really, there wasn't much. In three and a half years, I never even changed the brake paths. And not because I was abusing it, because it was just never required. It was a PHEV, so plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It did have regenerative braking, so I was using regen a lot of the times for slowing down and even coming to a complete stop. Well, you, you know, drive responsibly. And that actually resulted in the longevity of the brakes. Like I said, it was dealership maintained. And not once the dealership told me, well, it's time to change your brakes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Three and a half years. Original brake pads. Fuel economy. And this is where it gets tricky because it is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle so even if you don't plug in technically it will still run as a hybrid but because you're paying a premium for it for it being an electric vehicle you should plug it in to maximize that ev part of the phev i actually don't recommend it if you are unable to plug it in if you live in a condo building and you're going to be just using it as a hybrid then you're not going to really see the the benefit really and you may think that you overbought and that it's not maybe as efficient but if you plug it in every single night using the level one charger that comes with it it will take almost eight hours to fully charge it has a small battery i it was over two and a half years ago i don't even remember uh, the size of the battery but it was rated at 35 kilometers on a full charge that does not sound like a lot but it adds up that's 35 kilometers every single day that's what over a thousand kilometers or just about a month that you're driving without using a drop of gas i was able to run many errands without using a drop of gas actually i would go come back and still have range left my work was actually never close to home but the usual grocery shopping and errands were so yeah a lot of the commute on the weekends or after work was without using a drop of gas also i had a level two charger even though it was not required. It's not a fully electric vehicle, but I wanted to maximize that EV part of the PHEV. So I got a level two installed and guess what? 
the time drops from, well, when it's fully depleted, eight hours on a level one to three and a half hours on a level two. So guess what? I was really able to utilize that EV part of the PHEV because it was plugged in. Every time the car was not being driven, it was plugged in and it was ready to go much sooner on a full charge than waiting overnight. So if let's say I was out in the morning and I depleted the EV range, I would come back, plug it in, and then a few hours later, it's ready to go again when I had to go out again in a few hours instead of waiting the entire all day. Well, you wouldn't wait, obviously, you would just unplug and go. But then you would be using just maybe a little bit of EV range and then a lot of the engine using gas. Not the case with me. I really, really maximized that EV part of the PHEV. And that is really how I recommend using it. And I was able to get uh, over a thousand a few times and eight to 900 kilometers out of the tank very easily, very easily. And this is in not winter. In winter, the range dropped to, and it happens with EVs too, and even with regular ICE vehicles, you use more gas when you're running heater, uh, you're heating. In winter, I was getting about 500, maybe sometimes even just below 480. But then after winter, again, it's 800, 900, even 1,000. Uh, I actually met somebody once who went 2,000 kilometers before refilling the tank because he lived so close to work, well, actually his wife, and she had charging available free, free charging at work. So she would charge at home and then she'd get to work, plug it in there. And the only time really they used gas was over the weekends when they went out with the kids. And they were able to go 2000 kilometers before filling it up. And even filling it up was cheap. Back then it would fill up for $45 Canadian. And then gas got expensive and then it started filling up for 50 bucks. And I think the last time I filled it up was around maybe 60, I guess. I don't remember clearly. Uh, but yeah, it is fairly efficient and inexpensive to operate compared to a similar vehicle that is not a plug-in hybrid or even just a hybrid. And it was a great segue for getting into a fully electric vehicle. Shortly after owning it, I knew my next vehicle was gonna be fully electric because it actually bothered me every time I ran out of the juice of fully electric range. And then the engine kicked in. The, the, the sound of the engine used to bother me. And I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be electric the next one power I actually got a comment today asking if it was powerful enough well that's subjective what's your definition of power what do you want it to do personally I never had any problems going anywhere with it I live in Ontario well Toronto area so we don't have any hills that we have to climb so just going on the highway is fine no problem um, you don't have any problem going back on a windy road where there are a little bit of ups and downs no problems climbing there even in snow running errands obviously no problem but if you're stuck in traffic like this and there's a small window for you to get out and go before the car behind you comes closer then no it doesn't have enough power to get you out of that situation no. it's going to feel severely underpowered because i tried it once and yeah, I couldn't. Uh, so no. So your usual passing on the highway that you do is no problem when, you know, it's safe to do so. But tricky maneuvers like this, yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to pull them off. So why did I sell it if it was that great? Well, I got something greater, something better. Uh, the EV6, for those who follow my channel, is what I drive now. I have been driving for 21 months now, and I love it. It's great, and thanks to the Outlander PHEV, which got me the taste of EV driving, is when I decided that the next vehicle has to be fully electric. Keep in mind, this review is about the 2018 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, and that's important because that came with a two-liter four-cylinder engine. 
which was upgraded to a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine the following year. And I can't speak to the reliability of that particular engine because I did not have it, so I did not experience it, so I don't know. And the current generation Outlander, which looks and feels fantastic like a premium product, this is a collaboration between Mitsubishi, Nissan, and Renault, which is a French brand. And even though we don't have Renault in Canada, well, that's the collaboration of the three companies. And as a result, the engine and transmission in the current Outlander is from the Nissan Rogue. Uh, Nissan does not exactly have a good reputation, especially for their transmissions. Uh, I had a friend who had two Nissans, both Rogues, and the transmission died on both of them. Uh, again, this was a few years ago. I don't know what it is like today. But Mitsubishi does have a fantastic warranty, so I wouldn't worry about it even if the transmission and the engine are borrowed from Nissan. They do back it up with their excellent warranty, so there's that. I hope you found the video useful, and if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and thank you for watching.